So Eric, I don't uh, follow too many fire blogs these days, but I caught wind of a headline on Twitter from uh, Go Curry Cracker. And the title of the blog post was Failing at Early Retirement. So <laughs> naturally, I was interested. Yeah. Apparently, this article was prompted by uh, a reader email that uh, that he received. And it went something like, hey, my portfolio's down, prices are up, something we can all relate to. <laughs> so I'm considering going back to work out of early retirement, uh, as that income will help with my cash flow. But I'm concerned like I'll feel like I failed at early retirement. And you know, that's something that uh, caught my eye. It's a topic we've talked about before. But uh, when uh, Jeremy, who is the, the main author of Go Curry Cracker, I think along with his wife, when he got this, uh, it kind of prompted him to relate an experience he had where he actually went back to work part time for just a little while over the holiday season this year as a, a seasonal UPS driver. So seems like a reasonable thing you could pick up for a little extra cash. It was something like a maximum of eight hours a day, six days a week, 28 bucks an hour with a chance for overtime. And I enjoyed his story because because it's just a contained little experience. Uh, I think in the end, he only ended up working about 90 hours. And that was a gross pay of just about $3,000 for that five or six hours a day of work he ended up doing. Um, but I loved his conclusion. And uh, it was overall, I don't think it was worth it. <laughs> now, yeah. did you write that article too? I mean, did you? I mean, I, I think I came to that conclusion. How? What was your reaction? Yeah, you uh, you sent it along to me. I, it made me wonder: Do you have do you have some keywords set up in Twitter, like doing the Schadenfreude search for oh, people geez. who are failing at retirement? Huh? <laughs> no, I don't. It's just kind of the it? algorithm knows me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought it was interesting. I, it definitely made it placed me in his shoes, and I thought, okay, it, like, does this sound worth it? And it was actually funny reading through some of the comments because you got a real flavor for how other people approach what I guess we could turn this to be as like barista fire, right? Yeah, well, and I guess this is a, a sort of a temporary flavor of that, right? Because, you know, yeah. we talked about that idea before where people plan to stop working at their normal job and do something lower stress, maybe make some extra cash and it kind of keeps things flowing and maybe even they get benefits from it. Like uh, healthcare is the one that comes up the most, right? Yeah, I mean, barista fire, I think the term barista fire actually came from, it was derivative of the Starbucks model, yeah, which that's right. Starbucks provides pretty excellent benefits package to part-time workers. So part-time, I think here in the U.S. is a minimum of 20 hours a week, right? And less yeah. than 40, more than 20, less than 40. And um, health insurance, dental, vision, you know, all the things that are pretty expensive to uh, retirees, right? And so that can be a pretty attractive option. I think the, uh, the other sort of seed idea with Barista Fire is that you're designing a retirement nest egg or a fine number that is significantly lower that's right supplemented by these earnings which you're basically using to you know live on and you're still drawing from the portfolio but not yes. as much as you would need to if you didn't have the supplemental income exactly right and you know i i I think we're probably going to come back to that point because I, I love this idea of trying to plan for the sometimes distant future yeah. with a today mindset, right? right? Where something like Barista Fire could make perfect sense today when you project forward 10, 15 years or more, but maybe the reality of it will be different when you get there. Maybe the first reaction I had to this post was to the title. Right. I think for for sure, you and I agree on this idea that while it is the fire movement and it's a catchy name, lots of people, you know, aren't so enamored with the idea of retire early. So for for starters, just this whole the idea of failing at early retirement, it's really about the freedom to choose whether you're working or not. Right. I mean, I think you and I have been pretty consistent on that idea. Yeah, freedom to choose, but also like if this were me, I would maybe consider it a failed early retirement personally. <laughs> Because, I mean, you know, not in the sense that I would judge somebody about that, but, for, but yeah. for my own personal vision of what retirement looks like, I'm not sure taking a job on like this, and I'm sure we'll get to talk about this, is that appealing to me. And I think that's maybe the conclusion that was drawn by um, Go Curry Cracker, but also others in the comments saying, oh, that's yeah. not really my ideal uh, vision of what retirement looks like. Yes. Um, but great catchy headline and definitely encouraged the click. So I'm, you know, respect for that. <laughs> for sure. And you know, it's, it, it wasn't entirely clear 
to be fair, whether, you know, Jeremy, the author had to go back to work. I suspect the answer is he didn't have to, but he felt this kind of similar idea about, you know, my spending has Im- increased uh, uh, as I moved. I think he lived abroad and then he moved back to in, the States. In and Taiwan, spending- right? Yeah, I think that's right. Cause his wife yeah. is, is Taiwanese. Yep. Uh, his spend, their spending went up yep. and, you know, with looking at the market, no matter what size your portfolio is, it kind of gives you pause. So, uh, you know, and of course there's other reasons people consider work, right? I, I do, some work one day a week that I consider for fun, right? but I, I haven't felt like I had to go work. And yet I could relate to some of the things he was saying about why he thought it wasn't worth it, right? He, he felt like he was having to take decisions about family events. He mentioned snowboarding, getting behind on chores. The <laughs> blog was stagnant, which is clearly one of his sources of income, right? Yep, and so yep. you have this competition you're settle, setting yourself up for and I guess it wasn't too surprising that he found uh, where his opinions really lay after doing it. Yeah. And he, so he was driving for UPS just as a, I forget what they call this, but you're basically using your own vehicle. You're loading exactly. it up. You're meeting a truck somewhere. You're loading it up and delivering packages. And they expect, they have some pretty high expectations. It sounded like, yeah. um, like you said, minimum eight hour shifts. They encouraged overtime. It was a job he took during the holidays. So obviously they have the volume of packages is, is massive and yeah. the opportunity is there to make probably a lot more than his three thousand dollars that he earned and in fact you know they encouraged working saturdays they right. wanted to, you know all of the sort of the times when you might want to be with family around the holidays he was basically like mm, not worth it <laughs> i thought that was very telling in terms of how people who actually enter phi um actually might approach this, you know, like my yeah. time it, it's really, we're really talking about trading your time for some amount of money. And if I think about just the basic math of it, right. Yeah. Uh, $3,000. And let's say that was the only thing that he did I- I- in a year, you know, we multiply that by 25 and I mean, that's $75,000 of his portfolio that he basically replaced over a 30 year retirement. If we go by the 4% rule of thumb, right. Right, right. And, yeah. And it's it's interesting when, when you kind of run the math that way. And yeah. there's a big difference between needing to work, right? You know, for, for whatever reason, right? Your, your spending has to increase due to unforeseen circumstances, whatever they are. Um, and you need to go to work. But this idea of like choosing to go to work out of a little bit of nervousness, I guess that's not as strong of a driver. The need isn't as strong. And so, you know, the, the sort of factors that at play are a little different. And that definitely affects the way you think about it. I mean, I know for me, when I think about this kind of this kind of job, which to me doesn't seem to be a whole lot of fun, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. those guys work hard. Those, those men and women work really hard to do these kinds of job, especially in like, think about a climate where you live in the yeah. winter, there's yeah. just bad weather and they're out there and there, there seems to be a pressure to deliver a lot of packages and extra, like you said, that doesn't sound like a very desirable set of circumstances, but I could say even from my experience where I do something that I think is fun, that I enjoy I, the interactions with people at the winery tasting room. And yet when I feel like it's competing for my time, I have absolutely thought twice about whether it's the right thing to do. So that idea resonates with me. It's funny. Cause I was talking to Laura about this last night in preparation for this. I said, it, it, you know, would you actually work in retirement, you yeah, yeah. know, whether or not it was required? Um, and I, I think her answer was pretty telling in that, you know, she doesn't want to set up at a retirement, which requires her to work. Right. Um, and I realize many people are in different job situations, right? If you're working totally. a job that is a real drag and you can't stand it, it's high stress or whatever, and you just need to be done with that, I can see barista fire as being an appealing draw. But if you're someone, you're in a position that you, enjoy you like the you know people you're working for you like the work that you're doing you know you feel fulfilled and motivated by that it seems like especially if you're in your higher earning years that you know extending that time frame and earning you know up to your fine number rather than choosing a barista fire path where you have to in perpetuity work uh you know a part-time job that trade-off is is much different. Um, and she would she basically said that, and this might resonate with you, that she might be interested for different reasons other than monetary and you know, things like socialization, yeah. uh, you know, 
mental acuity, you know, keeping up with things, keeping in touch with people, just feeling useful, you know, utility. Yes. And I, I don't know if those things are, were any reason for you seeking out this job, but I'd be curious to hear you talk about that. Yeah, they do. And I, I think it's really great, first of all, that, I mean, you had this conversation that Laura is clearly thinking about these topics. I imagine you are too, not to say you're not, but I think she's on the money um, because literally when I think about the the job that I do, right, working in the tasting room, uh, I am happiest when it is at a certain level of busy, right? Yeah. When it's dead, I really feel like my time is being wasted. And then I look at that paycheck and I'm like, well, what am I making here? A hundred dollars a shift. Um <laughs> You know, my time is worth more than that if I'm, right. you know, being literally being paid to do nothing. And and I value money, right? It's not like I just sitting here burning, you know, bills here at my house. It's not what I do. But on the same note, when it is busy, it's easy to sort of reflect on why I like it because it's the interaction with people, right? It is social. It's educational. It scratches a uh, teaching itch that I have always had in my career and used to do execute on all the time. And so it is filling a need. I think it has to be balanced with my need for free time because as soon as it starts to get stale in any way, I'm immediately start questioning, is this the right thing to do? <laughs> Am I really satisfied with this? Should I put in my two weeks notice? And and that's something that, you know, I don't know, I guess it it surprises me when that happens, or at least the first time or second time it started happening, it surprised me because I do get this enjoyment out of it. But I tell you, it really competes with this idea of I'm in charge of my time that I'm so protective of now that I really feel like I wasn't before. Uh, and I suspect that's, you know, based on some of the comments I saw to that article, others are feeling that way too. Yeah. And what, have you ever thought about like drawing the line at what point would you just say, okay, not worth it. Like I know you and Lori haven't been able to do as much traveling as you'd like for various reasons, pandemic, you know, your child is still in the house and right. you don't have the same freedom that maybe you were projecting forward for the next couple of years. Um, but are there things that you've said like, okay, when it comes to this, um, no way I'm done with this. Oh yeah. I, I, well, one is pretty easy. Um, you know, my employers are so flexible with yeah. me and my scheduling, yeah. you know, I'm supposed to be there every Friday, but you know, I want to travel to see friends or family and do various things. And yeah, I give them notice, but I mean, to be fair, I ask for a bunch of days off um, and, you know, they don't have to let me take them. And, but presently they do. If that changed, I would probably bow out immediately because okay. having yeah. that freedom is worth everything. I think the second thing, the, the thought I've had, although I haven't quantified it to be fair, if we had these kind of like you know, week after week in the winter in particular, where it was just dead, right? Yeah. Nobody's coming in and I'm just getting paid to stand around and like, you know, clean things. I would, I would have to stop. I haven't said if it, how many days in a row. And thankfully I'm, I've always been rescued by kind of a busy last couple hours, even when uh -huh. the first part of the day was slow. But I tell you, um, that is another thing that really resonates with me. Cause it's like, well, I could be doing anything else other than standing here and organizing bottles and, you know, just yeah, entertaining yeah. myself. And that's, that's a very privileged thing to be able to say, right. Someone's willing to pay me to sit and read or do something like that. But this, that's not the freedom I bought. It's to be able to spend the time in ways that feel productive and fulfilling to me. And arguably I could do almost anything else and feel better about it than just kind of hanging out, waiting for time to pass. Now you're, that makes sense. it does. Yeah. Your position does not include, really any benefits, right? Correct no, not wrong. not at all. Okay. So, I mean, it could be much different if you were working some basic minimum threshold to get health insurance, for example. I mean, that could make totally. a, a massive difference, right? And I could see yeah. that you might deal with some low level of inconvenience to make that happen. And, you know, I don't know if 20 hours a week is low level inconvenience for someone because it probably depends on the job. Is it boring? Totally. Or is there socialization, you know, or is it meeting your goals for these things? But I mean, that's to me, the real appeal for someone, you know, entering barista fire is that, you know, you've had some revelation that you want to spend the time at this age, at this particular time, mm -hmm. doing balancing work, and free time and, and things you yeah. choose to do. And that, like, I totally respect that decision. And, and I re Absolutely. I've, I've read a, of a number of people who choose to do that. You know, someone whose father died at 
age 54 and they said, geez, do I really want to wait and yeah. retire at 50, which is even, that's an early retirement. Um, but you know, but I'm 35 now and I see that, you know, I may not, that time is not promised. And so I, I, I can really relate to somebody who makes that decision. It's just, yeah. it's, um, it is not how I would want to set up my ideal retirement. I, I do want to th- ask you though, um, at what point did you seek out the job? Did, did the job find you or did you find the job? Well, I mean, you're asking a reasonable question, Eric, and I've got to kind of dial it back and think how I got here. So I had been here for, I think, just a matter of months after, you know, we moved after I stopped working, moved to a new area, didn't know anybody and had been here for a few months. And I kind of had the idea that, you know, working in wine, if I could do that one day a week, that would be kind of fun. And there'd be some tangible benefits from it. Um, But, you know, I wasn't being super active about it. I kind of stumbled into it because, you know, we had met somebody at a tasting room was one of the owners. They were super nice. We liked the wine, seemed like good people to work with. So I just kind of dropped it out there that I was thinking about working a day a week. And it turned out that they were looking for somebody either for Friday or Saturday every week. And so I kind of fell into it. Um, was it but, motivated uh, by like making social connections? I mean, that, that was my recollection. It was definitely a big part of it, Eric. Yeah, okay. Um, and I would say it was that it was, I liked the idea of being part of that industry, get to meet people, make connections, whether they're social or, or otherwise, and, yeah, you know, yeah. get discounted tastings and things like that. I mean, that's, that sounded fun. Yeah. To and me. I, if I think about Laura's, you know, drive to, to seek employment, however minor it may be post fi it, it's all surrounding socialization like m- making yeah. connections and friends and you know as i think about how i would do that that's yes that's not where i would choose to build a circle of friends necessarily it's not how i've i, I mean i'm a sole operator here so right exactly. my connections at work are wide and varied but they are very like you know, minor hits. If I'm meeting with yeah. 10 different contractors for an hour a week, that's like, you don't just like build friendships like that necessarily. You know, it's, right. a, it's a different kind of, I'm used to a different kind of working relationship. So for me, I would rather seek out those connections in other ways. We, we just, um, we went to one of these kind of FI meetups this past week. It was a, it was really, a zoom, yeah, it was a zoom meetup with, um, people from the choose FI main group. Okay. Um, and I thought, and you know, that's an obvious circle of overlapping interests. Um, you know, and it was interesting to just kind of reach out and see where other people were on their journey. And it's something that I haven't made a lot of connections in that community yet, like locally. Yeah. And so right. it felt nice just to be able to have a common language and share, you know, common themes of what, you know, goals and aspirations. And so for me, like that, that would be more interesting or something built around a hobby, you know, yes. um, sports or you know, not sports, but like mountain biking or hiking or whatever, you know, that those kind of things. Um, that's more appealing to me than, than trying to make those connections via, some sort of employee, employee, employer relationship. It's, I feel like I'm basically unemployable right now. (laughs) I just, I don't feel like I make a good employee at this point. I, I just want to self-direct. Like if there's, yeah, cause you've been on your own, you mean for so long. Yeah. I mean, this is your not nine or 10th year doing this. I mean, I got to imagine. Yeah. 10th year. Yeah. You're pretty set in your ways and you know what you like and you you've owned your time. And even though it is for your employment, for, you know, you know, bringing an income to your family, um, you still control it to a great extent. Yeah. And so, and and I, I can invent ways to earn money via those skills too, you know, and, and also make connections. And I do that now where I'm reaching out and speaking to other people who are trying to build a business like mine and other architects and people are interested in entrepreneurship. So that those are all they feel like accessible avenues to me as, as opposed yes. to going to a, a coffee shop and, or like Laura's like, Oh, I could be a bartender. I'm like, you want to be a bartender? <laughs> Are you well, like 51 I... years old and be a bartender? <laughs> I don't know, man. Well, this is not think... great. They each have their place, I think. And I, I think there's not necessarily only one answer for every person. Never no, mind I get one it. answer I get for it. everybody. I can sort of see where she's coming from. Uh, Eric, if it's okay with you, I, I kind of want to make this distinction between 
planning to go this route and choosing to go this route because you and i are yeah. you know talking more and laura about more choosing things sure. for for whatever reasons we choose to take on a little work but this whole barista fire idea and i think you tipped me off to it i wasn't thinking about it when i first read the article maybe it was one of the comments i can't remember now but this whole idea of i'm just imagining like someone who's i don't know let's say they're 23 and their current trajectory has them hitting the point where they want to ramp down from their full-time stressful job whatever it is um at 40 and yep. then they plan to barista fire um so they're making a plan for maybe 17 to 20 years or more out but they don't know how they're going to feel when they get there. But all of their calculations are based on this idea of I'm going to ramp down. I'm going to go work in a coffee shop or whatever, 30 hours a week or 20 hours a week, whatever the minimums, because I want those benefits. And my plan is dependent on it. And I just wonder what that might feel like when you finally get there or when you start to approach that time and you're like, huh, I am absolutely done with my main career. I want to stop this. And yet, I also don't want to do this other thing. And maybe that's just me planning for the worst scenario. But I mean, is it unreasonable to go there? Or No, I, you know, just the idea that if you're taking on something, making calculations based on a certain hourly wage that you're making yeah. and hoping for your portfolio to appreciate to a certain level, it, it naturally doesn't figure in you ever reaching FI, right? right? I mean, it's, it's this state of perpetual work. And I guess the, to me, the whole purpose of becoming financially independent is so that you can remove money from the equation of, you know, the decision-making equation. And that allows you to do sort of whatever you want. It yeah. may not be everyone else's vision or version of totally. fire, uh, but I would have a real hard time with that personally, because I know yeah. the, the person that was standing in this office 10 years ago is kind of a different person. <laughs> I well, had yeah, yeah. Di different motivations and different aspirations and a different level of energy and a th different thirst for things. Totally. You know, I mean, those things change, right? And yeah, I couldn't have predicted that 10 years ago. I, I don't know that I could have predicted how I would be feeling today five years ago. I mean, yeah. how, how do you feel? I mean, let me put it this way. Um, even though I've been on uh, a stated trajectory longer than you have been, right? You came to the fire community at a different point or the idea of retiring early at a different point than I did. I don't honestly think that matters because until you're there, you don't know how you're going to feel, right? I felt one way and then I stopped working. And now I feel a different way because now, I, I mean, I would never would have predicted that I'd be so greedy about my time. It's like something I have to check myself on, yeah, to yeah. be honest, right? Because there's things I should do. We talked about this in the kind of first six months after I stopped working at my regular job. You know, there'd be things I need to do to help this household out that Lori needed me to do or that I should just know to do. And I was found myself kind of resisting them. And I had to like, you know, smack myself around, you know, virtually and be like, hey, you know, it's all right to need to do that stuff. Don't be so greedy of your time. But, you know, once you get past that kind of low hanging fruit, I'm still protective and, and I'm protective in a way that I wouldn't have anticipated. It's like, I want to be the one to decide how to use my time. And for me, on those days where it was really quiet in the tasting room, I was finding myself getting really frustrated. Like, why am myself? Like, why am I choosing to do this, to stand here? And like have nothing to do. Like I should just turn in my notice after my shift, work two more weeks and be done. I would rather volunteer for that eight hours. It, it just yeah. feels different, right? I mean, I haven't even yeah. shared this with you yet, but I've recently been training and I now passed the certification to do uh, volunteer tax prep for this season, right? Help people, you know, below a certain income threshold who need help with their taxes. Like that doesn't sound like a bad thing to spend eight hours a week on. And that's exactly the commitment they're looking for. Yep. And and I get to divide up the eight hours however I want. So like that's almost perfect for my mindset. I'm choosing it. I can allocate the time how I want. Like I think you work in a similar way, uh, you know, self-direction. Yep. Uh, and I'm not even getting paid. So it's not about the money. It's about something else telling me how I need to spend my time. And I had no idea that I would think that way. Yeah, that's that's you're unemployable. <laughs> I, maybe I'm unemployable. Sorry, I, I, that's I, that's that's kind of the definition of it, man. Yeah, I just <laughs> someone you know, tells you what to do, and you're like, nah, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, it's funny because you know something will catch my eye, 
like, you know, I'm just checking out the local news or whatever. And it's like, oh, they need somebody part time to do this. I'm like, that could be fun. But then usually what happens immediately is I'm like, well, they're going to want a commitment. Yeah, absolutely. like yeah. Monday and Tuesday every week for six hours or whatever it is. And like, they're not they're not going to be so like loosey goosey about it. Like, I oh, no, you just do it when you feel like it. it's going to be fine. <laughs> Like that might be the only way I can work at this point. And maybe that'll change in a year or five years. I have no idea. But right now, the <laughs> idea of, you know, like going back to the article, right? Knowing I have this many packages to do a day and I'm supposed to call at the end of it and take more if I have time and they want Saturdays. Like that sounds so rigid. <laughs> I just can't imagine it. And so maybe, maybe I've joined you in the unemployable club. I think you have, man. I, wow. I, I'm, I'm Realization. Working- I'm working with this <laughs> this person right now. <laughs> Not going to say who it is, what their roller capacity okay. is, but it, it, I don't know if you've ever worked with someone like this. But they they basically send you an email or they send you a text and they say, "Give me a call when you when you get a minute. I got to yeah. re- review a bunch of things with you." I'm like that just. I'm not going to do that. I'm never going to do that. No, I, I'm, I will never do that. I will. Do, I'm not going to respond to something like that. And I think that's yeah. one of the, that's one of the the uh, little litmus tests there. <laughs> if you too can answer that question in the same way, you're probably not cut out to work for someone. I love this idea about yeah. volunteering for for tax prep because that comes up when you look at sort of barista fire type jobs. Yeah, you know, there's a whole list of them. Um, some of them have really actually pretty amazing benefits. Um, yeah. And, you know, tax preparation comes up there is like all the kind of seasonal jobs you have yeah, kind of re- exactly. retail work, you have food delivery, we, we talked about UPS delivery, campground um, host, <laughs> right, tour Lots guide, of seasonal jobs, yeah, Uber, Lyft, all those things. Um, do you know anyone who's doing this? No. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> I, I don't. don't either. And I, it makes me wonder about about the practicality. And I think th- this is the thing that um, maybe you keyed into, but uh, I think it was uh, Harry Sitt was the one. He's the finance buff. Yep. He's the one who commented on the, the Go Curry Cracker tweet about oh, the article. Right. And he was saying, hey, it kind of proves that barista fire model doesn't really work. And that's where it came from, man. See, thank you for bringing that up. I feel like an idiot. Like my brain. I think this might be a downside of not working uh, full time. <laughs> I feel like my brain works about at 60% of the effort it did before, capacity it did before. Maybe that's a problem. I've noticed that. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I, don't I, tell I me that. I didn't want to say that, but yeah, I have oh, noticed it. Geez. Well, here we go. We got our next episode teed up. Does fire make you stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'm I'm kidding. Um, but <laughs> I've I, noticed it though. I'm telling you. Yeah. 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 Well, it's interesting because it it can be one of the benefits of working in a, you know, that you have some kind of commitment that you are yes. mentally tied into every week. And I mean, I see this project that you and I are doing as as a a ramp to into fire and totally. You know that that provides some you know, we're doing preparation work for this and we're thinking about this and there's a value sharing component and there's a connection, social connection component to it. So that, that seems inherently nice. Of course, it's not really a paid commitment, um, right. which is fine. Not everything has to be that way. Um, but it, in terms of like future projects or things I could see myself doing as I step into yeah. your shoes, you know, this would be more something out, you know, content creation, making videos, photography, creative work. You know, I, I, I like dabbling in things, you know, and actually things that make money that, that to me is like, you know, making money is a proxy for the value you're creating in the world. I really believe that. And yeah. And you're good at it. (laughs) I find it fun. It's like kind of a game, you know, and there's plenty of people who have made their nut and continue to, to work hard and heavy and go after it. And I don't know that that's for me, but yeah. it, you know, some slice of that is interesting. I mean, I, there's no way you're proof of this that you can't just sit around after you reach Phi and do nothing. You know, you can Definitely do all the not. hiking you want, all the traveling you want, and there's still time to fill. There is, yeah. Um, you know, I I, I want to rewind about ten seconds because you you started heading in a direction that I wanted to ask you about anyway. Like, I mean, I don't. I definitely don't see you sitting around. You're a creative. You're always, I think you're always thinking you probably have a notion list of just ideas of new, (laughs) new types of creation you want to do, whether it's audio, video, photograph, whatever it is. I know you must. Um, But I mean, when in my mind, and this is where I need you to sort of check me on this stuff, I could see you much more likely, you know, 
putting your stuff out there in a way that you completely control. Maybe this is a stupid example, but like taking photos and, you know, putting them on like, you know, a site that, that sells them. Right. But like you signing up, like doing commissioned work where somebody else controls what you're doing and your time and whatever, even if potentially lucrative, that seems a lot less likely. Yeah. Um, the, you know, am I right? I mean, totally. It's... Yeah. No, it's, it, this would be content creation or coaching or, you know, you know, just spending time connecting with others, helping others like that's, that's of interest to me. Um, but it would all be self-directed. It's a, yeah. like this, the self-publishing model for me has just been so transformative and life-changing. Yeah. I don't ever see walking away from that. And it's like when I first, so I, I've written a couple of books and when I, right. when I first, um, was thinking about writing those, I was contacting publishers and, you know, I, I was speaking to these people and they were telling me like all the work I had to do all the work anyway, right. I get a small advance, a small earn out, and then they keep the lion's share of the profit. And exactly. to me, that's just like, I, that model is, is bro completely broken. Yeah. And I think, you know, the past 10 years of my business have proven so, and you know, so there's no reason really to do that uh, for me personally. So yeah, no, I, I wouldn't, <laughs> probably wouldn't go. I don't know, but what do you think? Do you think I'm being kind of short-sighted and, and maybe missing no. opportunities because of I that? don't think you are. Honestly, Eric, no. I think you have built yourself a ramp into the right headspace yeah. that's going to fit you well post RE. I earnestly feel that. Like I'm discovering a lot of the things that you have figured out over the last 10 years, you know? And this is new to me. Uh, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I worked yeah. in a traditional career in an office for a boss and, you know, you know, yada, 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 you divorced yourself from that model 10 years ago. So I think you've already built an arsenal of like, I don't know, operating principles of how you yeah. like to work and earn and create and be directed and direct yourself. And you know what you don't like, because you still have some of that in your day-to-day -day job, even though you control, this is just my interpretation. Oh yeah. But <laughs> even though you control what projects you take on and, you know, you know, the types of work you do, you've still got built in sources of direction, like customers and vendors who you rely on. And, <laughs> and a lot of that stuff causes friction necessarily in your life. So you are just continuing to add to that list of things that you don't want to deal with when, when you get to choose now. So I think you're going in better armed than many people do who just have kind of ideas like, Oh, maybe I'd like this. And I don't think I'd like that. And I, I maybe I would try this. I bet you are going to be less likely to step into something and be like, hold on now. <laughs> That's not what I want. Do you yeah. agree with that? Or am I giving you too much credit? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I I'm curious to like having done this project together, you see that it's possible to make something out of nothing, right? Yes. W what, what do you think what lessons could you share with other people who are maybe stepping into a space where they're contemplating a job or maybe they want to dabble in something and they don't quite yeah. know what to do? What, what, what could you share? What lessons have you learned that helped you? I think the most impactful lesson for me, and maybe it's, it seems like such a little thing, but for me, it's, it's been important is to not that you have bought yourself the freedom to just step into stuff and try it and know that you could just ditch it. Right. It doesn't matter how much, no whether it's something you spend a couple hours investigating or something you spend months into investigating, there's no penalty for being wrong. Like you can try a hobby, whether it's writing or, you know, you know, blogging or doing a podcast or whatever. It takes almost no expense and could be completely free, it's just your time. But what's the penalty for deciding you hate it? Right. It's not you're not looking forward to a bad review from your boss and potentially getting fired or, <laughs> you know, demoted. It's just like, well, that that didn't turn out to be fun. So I'm going to stop. And I've gotten so much more comfortable with the idea of just trying stuff and moving away. I mean, I, I had an idea for a podcast and you know about it where, I mean, Lori made a logo for me. I started kind of seeding, you know, interest out there, getting yeah. some feedback, you know, put up, bought a domain. And then I decided like, you know what? Nope, not going to do it. Just going to let the domain expire. Not going to ask anybody else. Just going to move on. And, and, you know, I think from each of them, I learn a thing that I do or don't want to do the next time. Or, uh, you know, some, some I learn a lesson that teaches me something else to look into or not do. Yeah. Um, 
it's such a simple thing, but I mean, it's so different from the workplace for many people, especially in the corporate world where just that you can try and fail as many times as you want, because who cares? Right. I, yeah. I, I kind of love that. I, I love this idea of creating kind of micro businesses. That's kind of, that's how I think of all each one of these things. Like if I had to turn this into something that was generating some kind of revenue, that's kind yeah. of the little puzzle for me. And I love approaching it like that. And it's never been easier. Yeah. I think today, given how easy it is to publish online, self-publish online, totally, you can, you can make a business happen in a weekend and start earning from it. Um, totally. yeah, so I just, yeah, I think that's pretty incredible. When I think about, you know, stepping into retirement, and if you're thinking about maybe earning a, a bolus of money that supplements a uh, retirement portfolio, wouldn't it make sense to try and earn at your highest level possible? So you had all these skills coming out from, you know, the field that you were working in, yeah. uh, biotech, and you took a few consulting jobs, but you shut that down pretty quickly. Or was it just that you kind of, you know, phase out of the, you know, the knowledge space pretty quickly in something yeah. that's like a high tech field? There's a couple couple points you made that, that make sense. Uh, so the, the first is, yeah, knowledge is there's some knowledge that will persist for years and there's some yeah. that goes really quickly. Sure. Um, I think what I figured out and what was a nice transition for me was that I liked those kind of expert network calls where I just talk to one or a few people for an hour. They have very specific questions on a topic I know a lot about. They're willing to pay me a decent amount for my time. And then after that hour, it's done. You know, it's very transient. I don't, I don't think I initially realized why I would like that. But then when I started to get inquiries about longer consulting gigs, things that would be weeks or months of effort where, yeah, I was mostly self-directing, but there were still deadlines. That stuff I thought I would be interested in and it could earn at, you know, especially the you know good rates coming right yeah. out of my career. Yeah. I almost immediately started rejecting it. Uh, it just, it seemed like it was the earliest kind of sense I got about not wanting somebody to control my time. So I kind of put it aside pretty quickly and I've had no interest in it since then. And now even the expert network calls, that's been a mix of, I don't feel as current anymore, two and a half years later to talk right. about kind of business trends. And then I also just, I don't know, it's been a way less attractive to me to go back to that persona and be that person as much as I love talking about this stuff casually, you know, casually. And unfortunately a pandemic has given me a lot of reasons to talk to people about this kind of stuff. I just don't want to do it professionally at this stage. And so it's kind of ramped out of my life. I, I barely had any of it in 2022 versus 21. And I, okay. I haven't done a single call so far. I've turned down everything that's come my way. And honestly, but you're the still inquiries getting are You're becoming so, less. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask. They're becoming but. less. And I'm thinking about pulling myself out of those networks too, just because I don't even want to deal with the emails. Sure. And is, was this, if you're willing to say, was it like GLG or was it other things? Any of or? those. Yeah. That's one of them. I'm, I'm in like five different networks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have foreseen it, but, um, cause it seemed like an easy way to make money, but honestly, just the types, I also don't want to keep having the same conversations again and again. It just seems tedious. I was asking about the consulting um, somewhat because Laura it might be in that position. And Oh, totally. She's got great know, knowledge. And I thought, oh, is this a way for you to maybe still feel connected? Because you know, you get that, you invested a lot into your career and all of the professional experience that you built up. And it, it, there's a part of me that just says, man, it's, it'd be a shame to lock that away. Um, but at the same point, I know yeah. how that feels personally when people say, Oh, I've got this, you know, set of house plans and elevations, just take it. You know, it'll be quick. Just take a minute, review yeah. it, have a look at it. It's like, <laughs> no man, it's, that's, that's just not how it works really, you know? And, and so there's, there's always, it's kind of the tip of the iceberg, right? You have, if you can dip in and do the consulting call, like with a real defined scope, that's one thing. But when it, when the, the bulk of the work is kind of lying beneath the surface and it's kind of, it, it starts to eat up headspace. I can see that with you that, anything that is kind of this time commitment does occupy some headspace. And just, I know from some of our recent conversations, like you have to have that in pretty strict order and it has to right now be fairly open to, you know, your seeding of activities. It's like, it has yes. to be programmed by you. 
not by you're other right people. You're yeah. right, man. Yeah. I am happy to throw myself into something when I'm excited about it. Yeah. I studied yeah. so much Series 65 content. And then suddenly I had this idea of um, volunteer tax assistance. And I just put it to the side. I haven't scheduled the exam. I'm 90% <laughs> there. I was doing great on all the practice tests. And I was like, I started to simultaneously think like, I don't know if I really want to do that type of work anyway, which I already didn't know if I did. Yeah. Then it's like, and I really want to increase my volunteering hours. And in our budgeting episode um, that, that we recorded recently had me thinking about that, right? I want to increase my volunteer hours. It feels really good when I do volunteer work, this scratches the financial itch that I have and kind of the tracking down the minutia and tax returns are all about that. So I was like, why don't I combine the two? So, but, but I want to have the time available to do it. If something's competing for that time, I'm going to drive a wedge through it and push that stuff to the side because I really feel like I need to control it. And I think that's okay. Um, But it's not something I would have foreseen. Hey, for the tax thing. I mean, this is, that's really appealing to me. I, I, I have actually thought about doing that myself at some point in the future. Um, How does it work? So are you just a third party independent contractor? Do you have to carry some kind of insurance or what, what does that look like? Nope. Great question. So I'm doing it through a program called VITA. Okay. which I think stands for Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. Uh, we'll flash it on the screen if I got it wrong. But VITA is a program that's been around a long time. It's IRS backed, but it's run by other organizations like United Way. And they're all volunteers. Cool. And yeah. you can certify at a couple different levels, or you could even not touch tax returns at all and just do intake, for example. Um, but if you're doing tax returns, I uh, you kind of pass a certification exam. There's lots sure. of study materials online. And then when you are you pass that certification, you're now working with a local office. And in, in the case of our local office, it's all remote. So somebody else does intake, scans in all the returns, puts them in this portal. And you as a tax preparer, and, and you, you're, you do have you know liability off. There's, there's legislation of, about doing volunteer work and basically being okay. covered against, you know, unless you're sort of doing things fraudulently. Um, <laughs> You know, with good faith, you know, you do these returns, they're they're sort of QA checked by someone else, and then they are released to the uh, to the customer. So it's very contained work. Um, you can work at the level you choose. If you want to just do basic returns, you can do that, or you can yep. qualify at the advanced level, which I did uh, if you want a little more challenge. And yeah, that's it. You just every year go through this certification process and, and you work with a local coordinator who sets up your area. And uh, this will be my first time doing it. Cool. Yeah. So now I can come to you with my tax questions then. Uh, I mean, I I can give you an unofficial answer and direct you to the appropriate IRS documentation, hundred (laughs) percent. You want to talk about the uh, earned income credit? Sure thing. Got you covered. (laughs) Got it bookmarked. I I got other more complex questions. (laughs) Yes, you do. And I probably don't know them, Uh, (laughs) but uh, yeah, I I can do some basic schedule C stuff for you. I think you can too. You know, when I when I think about the lessons I took from this, I think for starters, choosing to work after you've retired early is certainly not a failure. Uh, it, I think the only way it could be considered a failure is if you had not planned for this and you suddenly find yourself needing to do it. Something has gone wrong with your plan. And even failure then sounds like a, just a terribly you know negative word. But, you know, I think if you choose to spend your time, some of your time working for income or for other reasons, that's fine as long as it's an informed choice. Uh, So if you earned $10,000 a year at a part-time job, which is perfectly reasonable to assume, right? You could replace $250,000 of a retirement portfolio at a 4% withdrawal rate, right? Right. That's pretty powerful, That's quick math, but I think it's right. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Hundred uh, percent, and and that's why it is. And it, you know, again, barista fire. Um, it makes good sense when you do the math. Um, and if that model works for you, it's super cool. Definitely not judging that idea. It's just not something that was appealing to me. Yeah, and it's, there's all kinds of hybrid models here, right? Yeah, you could set up a barista model for the first four years or five years, and and set some hard limits on it, and that replaces X dollars in that portfolio, and maybe that's enough to. Totally to get you to a certain place. I mean, I, I think just knowing about these, um, it, I'd really like to meet somebody who's doing this. Um, so I could yeah. really see what the 
the real day to day of it is, you know, is it similar to um, go curry crackers experience where it's like, okay, that's kind of a drag <laughs> yeah. or is it just liberating and, and freeing? And I imagine that has a lot to do with the personal context of the person who's working that job and where they're coming from. For sure. Well, if anyone in our audience is successfully carrying out a barista fire plan and it's working awesome, we'd love to hear from you. And if you really hate it and you're doing it, we'd love to hear from you too. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.